fill it up, make me whole. We want to sing a song titled Fill Me Up. I want you to open up your heart. The Bible says, open your mouth and I will feel it. God is ready to feel somebody to overflowing this morning. May be blessed as you listen. Let the sound of worship fill this room this morning. Father, we open ourselves unto you, O oh God. Fill us up. You provide the fire and now provide the sacrifice. If you provide the spirit. If you provide the fire, Jesus, I'll provide the sacrifice. God, fill me up, God, fill me up, God, fill me up, God, fill me up, fill me up, God, fill me up, God. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. What do you feel like doing? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The Bible says, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The Bible says they have a comment. When they that worship the Lord shall worship in spirit and in truth. Is that what the Bible says? And the Bible says this is the time. Is that what the Bible says? Is that what the Bible says? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord again. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. God bless you, choir. Thank you for taking us higher. I consider it a great privilege to be here this morning, and I want to thank God for bringing me back here about a year after um, to worship, to fellowship, to minister in this holy assembly. I thank God for that privilege. I want to also thank uh, the senior pastor, Reverend Gideon Oluodola. Oluodola. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity to stand behind your pulpit. He's my brother and my friend. But you know, when you say somebody's your friend, it doesn't mean you are equal. I can borrow you two scriptures. The Bible says God spoke to Moses as a man speaketh to his friend. Were they equal? The Bible says Abraham was a friend of God. Were they equal? So when somebody is your friend, it doesn't mean you are equal. So he's my friend, but he's my senior friend. Thank you, sir. I also want to thank the other leaders in the church, the pastorates, the assistant pastors, the associate pastors, and the elders, Dr. Salau, and all the people we see in front all the time. You know, I'm encouraged when I go to church and I see people who are there, and they are still there, and they are supporting, and they are working. And uh, may God come to bless you in Jesus' name. Pastor told me the theme of the year or the month is great renewer. Am I correct, sir? The great renewer. So this is a month of great renewer. And that is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. I will need the help of the multimedia this morning, the media to be helping me and I want to have one or two standbys.
to read the Bible with me when I'm going on. So if you're a good person that can read the Bible, you can get ready. If you're at the back, you can come and take my seat with the permission of the senior pastor. That passage says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Is that correct? But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. And my prayer is that this declaration will come to expression in your life this month in the mighty name of Jesus. I say this declaration will find expression in your life this month in Jesus' name. But I began to look at that passage very closely. When I come to this church, you know I like you to have your Bible with you all the time. And this is going to support us also. Pastor, as I was looking at the passage you gave to me, it just occurred to me there is, you know, in English language, it is improper to start a word with a sentence with but. Am I correct, sir? Can I come down? You know, when you are writing or you are saying, you don't start and say, but, you don't meet somebody with the way and say, but, does it make any sense? So when Pastor gave me that passage, I became a bit more curious. I wanted to find out something more. That thing couldn't have started with but. When God was going to make that statement, there must be something that is more than but. Do you agree with me? Please, you have a right to disagree with me this morning at any point in this message. So that made me to go a little to reverse backward, the way they say in Lagos. So I reverse backward to verse 28. So let's go to verse 28. In verse 28, the Bible says, Has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the heaven and the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary, and there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, what does he do? He increases strength. Verse 30 says, even the youth shall faint. So when you see but in verse 31, it was because of that even. So if you see your Bible, you can underline but in verse 31 and even in verse 30. The word but came because even. So and I will show you something now. Even the youth shall faint. In other words, you see, when in law you say shall, it actually means must. Those who are lawyers know what I'm talking about. When they say shall, even the youth shall faint. In other words, it will happen. There is nothing you can do about it. It will happen. So the youth shall faint. I mean, when youths are fainting, you know what is happening to aged already. Does that make sense? So let's don't talk about the aged. Let's just focus on the youth. Because the Bible says in 1 John, he said, I have known you young, young people because you are strong. Is that what the Bible says? So something about characteristics of a, of a, of, of a youth is that they are strong. But look at what the Bible says here. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall. But, so that was where the word but came. But they that wait upon the Lord shall do what? They shall renew their strength. I pray that your strength shall be renewed this month of August in the name of Jesus. Amen. If I were you, I would shout a bigger amen. amen. Whenever we pray, we should say a big amen. amen. I say, God shall renew your strength this month of August in the name of Jesus. Amen. I am saying again, God shall renew your youth your days, your strength, this month of August, in the name of Jesus. Amen. My Yoruba pastor told me, and I think I told you last year, Lenya ya mi, amiloku. So that is why you must say me very well. I said, God shall renew your strength, this month of August, in the name of Jesus. Amen. God shall increase your power, this month of August, in the name of Jesus. Amen. God shall increase your anointing, this month of August, in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Somebody is sitting right there. This month of August, you shall not faint in the name of Jesus. Somebody is there. I say, you shall not faint in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, even the you shall faint and be weary. And young men, not that the young men shall fall. The Bible says they shall utterly fall. There is a difference between falling and falling utterly. Am I reading the Bible? Is it like that in your Bible? The Bible says young men shall utterly fall. But that does not mean all of us will fall. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, in the latter days, some shall depart from faith. The Bible didn't say all shall depart from faith. The Bible says who shall depart? Some. Some. So when the Bible is saying here that young men shall utterly fall, it is not everybody shall, that shall fall. I said that this month of August, you shall not fall in the name of Jesus. God shall increase your strength in the area of prayer in the name of Jesus. God shall increase you in evangelism in the name of Jesus. God shall increase you in the study of the word of God in the name of Jesus. God shall increase your family. God shall strengthen your business. God shall strengthen your finances. He will strengthen your health this month. You will not become weak this month in the name of Jesus. If I were you, I would shout a bigger, bigger amen to that. There are some people that their are areas in their life, they need restoration. Wherever in your life you need restoration, God will restore you in the name of the Lord Jesus. This morning, I will be sharing on a subject. What to do when you cannot pray? Did you just hear me now? What to do when you cannot what? When you cannot pray. I perceive that God is asking me to just briefly teach on this. But before I go into that, I want us to do some quick prayer. Very quick prayer. Very quick prayer. And I'd like you to rise to your feet. When you rise to your feet, you're going to lift your two hands up to heaven. And you are going to cry with a loud voice. You are going to cry with a loud voice. Now, when we are praying, there are different types of praying. There are times people can pray and pray quietly. But on this occasion, I want to do what? To cry with a loud voice. In Matthew chapter 27, 27 verse 46, the Bible says, you remember when Jesus was on the cross? The Bible says, and he cried with a loud voice. Some people don't know that you can cry with a loud voice. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The Bible says, Jesus cried. How? I cannot hear you. Is it there on the screen? And he cried with a loud voice. So sometimes when you are praying, you cry how? With a loud voice. It's allowed. It's biblical. It's the scripture. And that was how Jesus did it. He cried with a loud voice. So this short prayer, I want you to pray. I like you to lift up your hand and cry with a loud voice. Do you know that if they were not crying with loud voices, some of the passages in the Bible, the prayers will not be written verbatim for us. For example, in John 17 verse 1, the Bible says, And Jesus lifted up his eyes to heaven and prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify now your son so that you may be glorified. That prayer was written verbatim. If he did not pray it with a loud voice, how did they hear him? He went to Gethsemane in Matthew chapter 26. In verse 36, the Bible says, He went with Peter, James, and John. He put them somewhere and went yonder to pray. Is that correct? And when he got there, he fell to his face and prayed. And he said, Father, I wish that this cup passed over me. He went to the place with Peter, James, and John. He went yonder. He was not with them. How did they know the prayer point? He must have been crying with a loud voice. Do you agree with me, somebody? So the Bible says he cried. With a, some people think that uh, uh, when you are praying, you, you see, they don't, they, they, they don't understand the dynamics of prayer. The Bible says he prayed and cried with a loud voice. He cried, how, sir? How, sir? I cannot hear you. Say it loud. I cannot hear you. How did he pray? How did he cry? He cried with a loud voice. So you are going to cry with a loud voice. What is that prayer point? 
God of August. Everybody say God of August. God of August. You know this God, our God, is the God of this August. Do you agree with me or not? God of August. Renew my strength. This August. In the name of Jesus. Wait, don't pray yet. Is that prayer complex? Is it complex? Lift up your two hands to heaven. Cry with a loud voice. God of August. Increase my strength. Renew my strength. This August. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. He cried with a loud voice. He cried with a loud voice. He cried with a loud voice. Jesus cried with a loud voice. I like you to pray this prayer. We are praying two or three. With a loud voice. With a loud voice. With a loud voice. In Jesus' precious name, we're praying. Almighty God of August. Almighty God of August. Renew my prayer life. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. Almighty God of August. Pastor has declared this is your month of renewal. Renew my prayer life. Almighty God of August. Pray with a loud voice. Renew my prayer life. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Almighty God of August, renew my fasting life. Are you afraid to pray that one? You are looking at your wife? You are looking at your husband? Pray it and let us begin to fast. Open your mouth and pray. Almighty God of August, renew my fasting life. This month of August, in the name of Jesus, Open your mouth and pray with a loud voice. Open your mouth and pray. You must be praying and they must be hearing. You must be saying it and they must be hearing. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Almighty God of August, renew my Bible study life. Renew my evangelizing life. Renew my visitation life. Renew my follow-up life. Renew my spiritual life. This month of August, in the name of Jesus, cry with a loud voice. 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 This is a month of renewal, great renewal. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Almighty God of August. Almighty God of August. Renew my career. My marital life. Renew my health. Renew my finances. This month of August. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray with a loud voice. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Father, we thank you. Take over my tongues. And again, stand upon the lips of my mouth. Minister to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. And shall we be seated. What to do when you cannot pray? In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verse 5. Acts chapter 12, verse 5. What to do when you cannot pray? Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. I'm going to read two verses of the Bible, or two passages of the Bible, very quickly. I'm going to read Acts chapter 12, verse 5. And verse 6, in Acts chapter 12. 
Then I will read Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Those two passages, you can put your fingers there, and I'm going to read them. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. Did you see that? But prayer was made. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, what was Peter doing? I can't hear you. Peter was sleeping. Keep your finger there and go to Acts 16. Acts chapter 16. Verse 25. And at midnight, at midnight, Paul and Silas, what were they doing? They were praying and singing praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. Now, what is the difference between these two, you see these two experiences and reactions? Two people were in prison. These were giants of faith. These were men of faith. You agree with me? And they had similar problems. One, I mean, Peter and John were in prison. Peter was in prison, not, not and John. And then Paul and Silas were in prison. But did you notice that Peter was sleeping in that prison? Is that correct? And then what was Paul and Silas doing? They were praying. So you can see two people reacting differently to the same circumstance. Is that correct? Peter was sleeping, but Apostle Paul was doing what? He was praying. You will agree with me, and I know that I have found myself in that situation when sometimes I cannot pray. How many of you want to be honest with me this morning? So, don't condemn Peter. Don't blame Peter. There are some circumstances of life that will happen and sometimes weigh you down to the extent that you cannot pray. Do you agree with me before I go on? Good. So the Bible says Peter was in prison and he couldn't pray. And that is what is going to form the focus of what I want to discuss with you. What to do when you cannot pray. Because this month of renewal, God must renew your prayer life in the name of Jesus. This month of renewal, God must renew your relationship with him in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. What can we do when we cannot pray? When things become so terrible and you are weighed down and you don't know what to do. What do you do when you cannot pray? Do you just give up? Now I want to give you some very quick six nuggets or formulas that I like you to know. And I want to be helping you in your Christian life, particularly as we are looking up unto God for renewal this month of August. When you cannot pray, decide if it's a sin issue that keeps you from praying. So if you cannot pray, check and see whether it is sin that is not making you to be able to pray. And that is because we need grace to be able to pray. If you look at Philippians, sorry, Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, the Bible says, let us therefore come boldly, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now, you see, for you to be able to pray, you need grace. And when you are in sin, what sin does is it empties your grace. You are not able to pray. Hallelujah. In Romans chapter 1, chapter 6, 6 Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Look at your Bible or look at the screen. The Bible says, what shall we say? Shall we continue in what? In sin. And what abound? And grace abound. So nobody can continue in sin and grace abound. So sometimes, the reason you cannot pray is because sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, is because you are in sin. And when you are in sin, what you do is that you decide you, 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 you confess your sin and ask for forgiveness. What that does is it opens your channel of prayer again. So the first thing I'd like you to know is when you cannot pray is you check and find out, have I committed a sin? Have I done something wrong? It makes it difficult for you to pray. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 15 verse 8, 
the sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but the prayer of the upright is his delight. That same passage was repeated verbatim in Proverbs 21, verse 27. The sacrifice of the wicked, the prayer of a wicked, when a wicked man wants to pray, is an abomination. So what sin does is it blocks avenue between you and God. And if you are here this morning, you are a Christian and you are committing sin, you need to confess your sin and make sure you run away from sin. If you are living a life of sin, you are not able to pray. Praise the name of the Lord. So the first thing you need to do is to check, is this sin that is not making me to pray? What are we talking about? What to do when you cannot pray? Praise the name of the Lord. In Proverbs 28 verse 9, He that turneth away his ear from hearing the Lord, even his prayer shall be an abomination. So what, abo- what sin does is it blocks that avenue. It makes your prayer not to be able to flow properly. And that is why sometimes you cannot pray. Because when we are talking about renewal, in the area of prayer, renewal of our spiritual life, renewal of fasting, we need to know how to get all these things in place in this month of August. And I see God helping somebody over there in the name of Jesus. Number two, what do you do when you cannot pray? Whenever you cannot pray, I like you to struggle through short prayer. And you should be honest with God. Whenever you cannot pray. You see, sometimes we can pray for long hours. We can sit down and begin to pray and pray and you are flowing. But sometimes you see that blocking. Sometimes you cannot go on. What you need to do is to pray short prayer. It is not wrong to pray short prayer. And I will show you what I call short prayer. For example, when I came to this church last year, I was preaching on um, there was war in heaven. Did you remember that passage? And then we're praying and saying, the prayer that, or what um, Angel Michael said to the devil, he said, what did he say to the devil? The Lord rebuke you. Did you notice that that was a very short phrase? It's not a very long, complex prayer. So whenever you find out that you cannot pray, because what I want to do is, I want to see how we can help people that are struggling in the area of their Christian life. Those who are struggling in prayer. So that you don't begin to look at some people and say, oh, how can I get to that level? You can get to that level. And this is how they got there. This is how I got there. This is how they got there. This is how we all got there. If you are committing sin, confess your sin. If you are finding it difficult to pray, pray a short prayer. Let me show you something. Matthew chapter 14. In Matthew chapter 14, are you there with me? In verse 30. But when he saw the boisterous wind, when Peter, you remember Jesus appeared to Peter for to watch of the night. And when Peter saw the boisterous wind, he was afraid. And he began to sink. And what did he do next? And he cried. Did he say he cried there? Yeah? Say, what did he say? I can't hear you now. What was the prayer point in that place? How many words were in that prayer point? How many? Now, do you need to be a professor of theology to be able to pray that one? That is what you do when you cannot pray. Because at that particular time, Apostle Peter would not be able to put and conjure all complex religious words together. He just lifted up his hand and said, Lord, save me. Hallelujah. So when you cannot pray, pray a short prayer. A short prayer does not mean for a short minute. A short prayer means pray that short prayer that you know. You can pray it, you can repeat it and say it forever. It is not wrong for you to repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it until you get through in the spirit. Remember what Jesus did in Matthew 26 when he went to get Simon. The Bible says he was going to get Simon. He took Peter, James, and John. He put them somewhere. He went further. Look at what happened. He went yonder. He fell on his face. He began to pray. Father, I wish that this cup pass over me. Not by my will, but according to your will. You see, that's a very short prayer. Do you agree with me? I will show you long prayer in the Bible. That was a very short, simple prayer. Amen? And the Bible says, he came about an hour. Is that correct, sir? He came about an hour, and he found them doing what? Sleeping. Do you know what, sir? Jesus Christ prayed that simple prayer for one hour. One hour. That simple phrase. That short prayer. How many hours, sir? One hour. Some of you would have changed it in between. 
He prayed that short prayer for how long, sister? One hour. Because the Bible says he came back to them about an hour. And maybe I should just digress a little to tell you in this church that anytime you are praying, if you have not prayed for one hour, you are not a good prayer person. Because when Jesus came to them, you know what he said? His disappointment was, how come you cannot watch with me for an hour? Because he expected that they should be praying for one hour. So if you are here this morning, if you have not been praying for one hour, in the month of July, the month of August is a renewal month. This is the month to begin to pray for one hour. And don't tell me, Pastor, what will I be saying for one hour? It doesn't have to be long word. Lord, save me. 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 Because that was what Jesus did. The Bible says, sir, he went back, you know, after that one hour, he went to pray, and he came back again. We don't know whether one hour or 30 minutes, he was that one. But when he came, he found them doing what again? Sleeping. And he said the same thing. But you know, when he went to pray, he repeated that same prayer verbatim. Am I correct? Am I forging the Bible? No. And he did the same thing the third time. And when he came back and he found them sleeping, you know what he said to them? Praise God. So you must pray. Short prayer. Anytime you find it difficult to pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Remember, I'm talking this morning what to do when you cannot pray. Point number three. Get someone else to pray for you and to pray with you. That is what to do when you cannot pray. Get somebody to pray what? To pray for you and to pray with you. They are two different things. They are not the same. Get somebody to pray for you and get somebody to pray with you. Turn your Bible with me to James chapter 5 very quickly. In James chapter 5, from verse 14 and verse 16, I will read that for you. James chapter 5. The Bible says, is any among you afflicted? Let him do what? Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Is any of you afflicted? Let him do what? Let him complain. Let him grumble. Verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him do what? No. Verse 13. Is any of you among you afflicted? Let him do what? Let him pray. Verse 13. Is any Mary, is it verse 14? No, I'm reading verse 13 now. Is any Mary, let him sing psalm. Now, let's look at verse 14. Is any sick among you? Verse 14. Is any sick among you? What should the person do? Me go, me go, me go. Is any, is any, is any, is any, is any, is any sick among you? What should he do? Let him call. Did the Bible say, let the elder go to him? It is his responsibility to call the elder. When you cannot pray, it is your responsibility to call. How many times have I done that to you, sir? How many times have you done that to me, sir? It is your responsibility to look for somebody to pray with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm not saying the church cannot come and pray for you, but the Bible says here, let him call. Ah, in simple English, let him call, not let them go. If you want to invite them. So when next you cannot pray, look for somebody to pray for you. That is leg number one. There's a second leg that I want to show you. Go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 18 verse 19 that you know very, very well. Again, I said to you, Matthew chapter 18 verse 19, that if two of you, if how many of you, say it loud, let me hear you. If two of you shall agree, as touching anything, is that what the Bible says? That they shall ask, it shall be done for them. So you can see that the first one talk about getting somebody to pray for you. This is getting somebody to pray with you. Do you agree with me, somebody? Hallelujah. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4, run very quickly. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9 to verse 12. Let me show you something. Why you need to get somebody to pray with you or for you in some circumstances. Not all circumstances. It's good to develop a very sound individual personal prayer life. But sometimes when you do not know, when you cannot pray, you can get somebody to pray for you or to pray with you. Now let me show you something. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 in your own Bible. Chapter 4 in your Bible. And verse 9 to verse 12. The Bible says, 
Two are better than one. Excuse me, man. Two will always be better than one. The Bible says God came to Abraham. So, sorry, God came to Adam. And God said to Adam, it is not good that a man should be alone. If the Bible says something is not good, it is not good. Whatever God said is not good can never be good. It is not good that a man should be alone. This person confirms it. He said, two are better. Two, sir, will always be better than one. Why? I will show you in verse 10. The Bible says, I will continue, because they have a good reward for their labor. Verse 10 says, if they fall, if they fall, that is, it's likely they will follow. If they fall, don't ever think you cannot fall. You know, the Bible says, whosoever thinketh is standeth. Let him take it, lest he fall. You are the one thinking that you are standing. The Bible says, if he fall, if he fall, in verse 10, then one will lift up his fellow. Is that what your Bible says? But what to him that standeth alone? What to him that standeth alone? For if he falleth, he has no one to help him. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Verse 12 is very crucial. He says, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. And that is why I want to encourage you to always attend prayer meeting in church. Sometimes you cannot pray alone. You have to get people to pray with you. I'm talking this morning about what to do when you cannot pray. I'm not talking about what, when you can pray. There are times you cannot pray. And I'm genuinely sent to you by God. This is the fourth message I prepare for this meeting, sir. I told pastor in the office this morning. Fourth message. This message I got at 2 a.m. to 3.30 a.m. this morning. So this is what God told me to say to you. I told pastor today, God sent me to somebody in this church. So if you're not coming to a prayer meeting in church, review your life. Renew your life. Allow God to walk with you. Make sure you are coming. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. It's a very popular scripture. All of us know that passage. Not forsaken. Turn your Bible to that. Like Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. Not forsaken. Not forsaken the coming together of one another. You know the frightening things are in that passage. Not forsaken. The coming together of one another. The frightening thing there is as it is the man now some people. Be as you know. So when you see a brother who is not coming to church, God already knew you before you stopped coming. You already put your name among those people. As the manner of some people. So when next you see somebody here who is not coming to church to pray a meeting, we already know. Don't think you are shocking the pastor. God already put your name in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What to do when you cannot pray? Point number four. Number four, very quickly. Meditate on the word of God. Whenever you cannot pray, there are times I cannot pray. I cannot pray. I am talking to you. I am confessing to you this morning. There are times I cannot pray. There are times I, I cannot pray. I cannot pray. I will be like Peter in Acts chapter 12. The Bible says he was in prison and he was sleeping. I had been in that situation before. If you want to be honest, you have been in that situation. Do some of these things I've, talk, I've spoken about. The next one you are going to do is meditate on the word of God. Let me show you something. In the book of Esther chapter 1, Esther chapter 1, Esther 1, 1 to 2. Maybe I'll just look at verse 1 alone. Esther chapter 1. Have you seen it, sir? The Bible says, on that night, the king could not sleep. What did he do? He commanded that they should bring the book. Say to somebody, bring the book. When you cannot sleep, when you cannot pray, meditate on the word. Sometimes I cannot pray. So I look for, I put in this iPad or iPhone or whatever we all have, we have Bible there. I keep listening to the word of God. It is not a sin not to be able to pray at that time. Just do something. Because what the devil wants is for you not to be able to do something. Fill that gap with something else. He will be ashamed because he would, have, he would have lost. The Bible says this king was a wise king. He could, not, he could not sleep. Instead of you to roll, you know what you do when you cannot sleep? You turn to channels. You begin to look for all kinds of stations on your television. Instead for you to do what the Bible says, am I not saying the truth? Confess, confess, confess your sin. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says this king could not sleep. So instead of rolling from one side of the bed 
to the other side of the bed, the Bible says, he commanded them, bring the Bible for me. I'm using the word Bible there. Hallelujah. Habakkuk chapter 1, chapter 2, quickly. I'm running through this now. I will stand upon my watch, Habakkuk 2, chapter 1. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will want to see what he will say to me. Now, I'd like you to notice in that place, Habakkuk was not praying, sir. The Bible says, I will, sir, I will stand upon my watch, I will set upon my tower, and I will want to see what he will say. Whenever you cannot pray, what of what he wants to say to you? It's not all the time you are saying something to him. He wants, so what Habakkuk did was, he said, okay, no, no problem. How will we wait and be hearing what he will say to me? When I needed a sermon for this meeting in the morning, I wasn't praying, sir. I was waiting for him to list to talk to me. That is what this month is about. This month is about renewing your strength. It's a month of renewal. Things you cannot do before, begin to do them. Things you are doing before, do them more. The Bible says, he waited to see what God would say to him. And in verse 2, and the Lord answered me. Okay, how can you answer somebody that is not talking to you? Ah, uh, am I going mad? Am I running mad, sir? Am I becoming a, 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 a mental, 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 mental health person? No. The Bible says he was there standing on the watch and the Lord answered. How can God answer something that you are not saying? In other words, God recognized that attitude of listening to the word of God. He, rec he recognized it as you are praying. Praise the name of the Lord. The next one, I have just one or two more points. The next thing is to pray in the spirit. What to do when you cannot pray? Pray in the spirit. Romans chapter 8. Turn your Bible to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And I am making sure that I'm not quoting any scripture that is strange this morning. You all know them. The Bible says, verse 26 to 27. Likewise, the spirit also helped our infirmity. That is infirmity of not able to pray. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. There are two problems there. Sometimes you don't even know the prayer point. Am I correct? Sometimes you know the prayer point, you don't know how to present it. But the Bible says, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession. He helps us to present it with groaning that cannot be uttered. You cannot explain that groaning. Is that correct? And he that searched the heart knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So whenever you cannot pray, pray in the Spirit. Sometimes I cannot pray in my English or Yoruba language. I begin to pray in the Spirit. It is not wrong to pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Everybody go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Let me show you something in verse 2, in verse 4, and in verse 18. I will start with verse 2 very quickly. Whenever you cannot pray, what should you do? For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth what is yet. He said, I'll be, I'll be it. In the spirit, he speaketh mystery. In other words, when you are speaking in tongues, there are some people in this church who can speak in Raise up your hand if you can speak in tongues. Raise up your hand if you can. It's not a shame. Okay. If you cannot speak in tongues, I'm sure the church has a program to help you to be able to do that. But if you can speak in tongues, make sure that when you cannot pray, pray in tongues. 27th of December, 1987. 27th of December, 1987. I got two of my, one of my friends. And then we went to a hall. I was in the University of Baden. We went to a hall called Belo Hall. And then we went to a room. Every student, most students had gone home because it was Christmas period. I said I wasn't going home. I went into that room with my friend called Timothy. And then we locked ourselves up. And we prayed in tongues from 12 midnight to 6 a.m. We were not speaking Yoruba. We were not speaking English. We were not speaking Kogi language. Do you understand what I'm saying, sir? We were only speaking in tongues. Only in tongues. And we told ourselves before we started, don't speak in any language, but only in tongues. My, my height has been like this for some time. I'm six foot one. By the time I finished, 6 a.m. in the morning, I was like 100 feet, sir. I knew that my life turned around. I knew there was a change in my life. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2 says, How, if, if, Whoever speaketh in, in an unknown tongue, speaketh not unto man. Not, I'm not talking to you. When I say makala katayatalia, I'm not talking to you, sir. I'm talking to God in heaven. And the Bible says, as I'm talking to God in heaven, he understands what I'm saying. 
That is verse 2. Look at what the Bible says in verse 4. Verse 4 says, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edified himself, but he that prophesied edified the church. That is not what sparks me in that chapter. The important thing to me there is verse 18. In that verse 18, everybody look at verse 18 on the screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 18. I thank God I speak in tongue more than you all. If I say that to you, won't you say I'm arrogant? Won't you say I'm proud? I thank God. I... So there is quantity of speaking in tongue. I'm not talking of quality now. I'm talking of tongue in quantity, in numbers, in, 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 in quantum. I speak in tongue more than you all. It means we can quantify it. When I went to pray with this pastor, sometimes we are praying in tongues. All right? I know when he has stopped praying in tongues, and I can continue. I know when, he, so we know the hour, we know the quantity. Don't deceive yourself. Apostle Paul says, he said, I pray in tongues more than, so both of you can know who pray in tongues more. It is not pride to say that, to make that statement. So when you cannot pray, you know what to do. Pray in tongues. When you don't know what to say, say it in tongues. No Yoruba, no English. Praise the name of the Lord. I know my time is gone. Yes, by some few minutes. But we are going to practice some of this for about two minutes. And I will show you how. The last one I want to talk to you about, write your prayer down. Before the advent of iPad, before the advent of iPad, I had used 32 notebooks that I've kept. I took them from Nigeria to England. I had used 32 notebooks handwritten with my own pen. 32 notebooks. 32 notebooks handwritten with my own, before the advent of this thing in my hand. What do I do? Sometimes, I write down my prayer when I cannot pray. You know, sometimes I'm telling you practical things that can transform your life. I'm not talking theory here. Practical things. So I will write, Lord Jesus, this, this, just like you are writing, sir. You see the way you are writing? I write my prayer points. I can write like five, and I'll be praying them. You know, when you cannot pray, when you, you can go and do some of these things. Hallelujah. Have I said something to somebody here this morning? Ha. Have I said something to somebody here this morning? So we are going to close. We are going to practice three of these. Number one, we are going to pray because I have said, if you cannot pray, Get somebody to pray for you or with you. So we are lucky we are many in church this morning. It's not going to be for a long time. Number two, we are going to pray short prayer. You know short prayer? Like what Peter prayed, Lord, save me. That one, you don't need to go to Bible school to know how to say it. Even if you are as stupid as I am, you can say that one. Number three, you have to pray in the Spirit for those who can pray in tongues. I want you to rise on your feet. We are going to pray. Lord, revive us again. Everybody say, Lord. Lord. Ha, Lord. Your two hands up. Lord. Revive us again. Ah, is that how to say it? Revive us again. I'd like you to join your hands with the hands of the person on your right and on your left. I'd like you to cry with a loud voice. Lord, Lord this, month of August, this month of August, revive us again. Revive us again. Open your mouth and begin to pray now. Revive us again. What do you do when you cannot pray? You get somebody to pray with you. You get somebody to pray for you. You pray, short prayer, short prayer, short prayer. Don't make it complex for yourself. And pray in the spirit. Those are the three you are doing now. Lord, revive us again. Lord, revive us. Revive us. Revive us. Revive us. Revive us again. Revive us again. Revive us again. Lord, revive us again. In Jesus' precious name we pray. 
while we are joining our hands together, I'd like you to listen. If you are here in church this morning, you have not given your life to Jesus. Leave your hand. Leave your hands. You have not given your life to Jesus. One of the reasons why you cannot pray may be because of sin. Because you are living in sin. And the Bible says the prayer of a sinner is an abomination. It's a dirty rag before the Lord. So I want to give you an opportunity, a quick opportunity. My time is completely gone. But I want to give you a quick opportunity to give your life to Jesus. If you have not given your life to Jesus. If you have given your life to Jesus and you are living in sin, I won't call you to the front because you know the sin, you know yourself. There are people here, you have given your life to Jesus, you are still committing fornication, you are stealing, you are committing adultery, you know you are lying, that is you between you and God. Because you cannot be renewed if you don't confess those sins. But if you are not giving your life to Jesus, I will give you that opportunity. So wherever you are, all eyes closed, raise up your hand where you are. If you have not given your life to Jesus, if you are still a non-believer, you are still in sin. Raise up your hand, I'd like to pray with you here before we go on to pray this last prayer. Anybody raise up your hand, anybody there? Is there anyone you have not given your life to Jesus? Anybody? Is there anybody? Is there anybody? Okay. Raise up your hand. I want to see the hand. I can see that hand over there. I can see another hand over there. Anybody? Anybody? Raise up your hand. It's not a thing to be ashamed of. To give your life to Jesus is not a thing to be ashamed of. Just move to the center. Yes. Any other person? Come. 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 A pastor, you should take care of that for me, please. Somebody look after that for me. Go that way. Stay there. Any other person you have not given your life to Jesus, stay there. No, not here. Stay there. No, no, no. Look at my hand. Stay there. Any other person, come to the front. Stay here. Stay here. It's not something to be ashamed of. You have not given your life to Jesus. You cannot, be, you cannot have a good prayer life. Very good. Who is looking after this for me? All right. All right. All right. So take them somewhere. Follow this mom. Follow this mom. Go after her. Please clap your hands for them. All right. Join your hands again. 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 That prayer point, you are going to pray it. You remember Jesus prayed it one hour. One hour. One sentence. One hour. He came back. If I ask you to do that, you say, oh, pastor, this is where I repeat. No, no, no. I'm talking about the Bible. The only thing I know very well is that Bible. I like you to pray. Lord, revive us. And when you are praying that prayer, your mind should be going to different areas. Revive my prayer life. Revive my, I mean, you know the areas you are not doing very well. I know when I'm not doing very well. When I'm not doing very well in evangelism, when I'm not visiting, when I'm not um, attending fellowship, revive me in this area. I want a better relationship with you. Revive me again. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Revive us again. Revive us again. Oh, revive me. Revive me. Revive me. Revive me. Revive me. What to do when you cannot pray? Thank you, Jesus. What to do when you cannot pray? Get someone to pray with you. Kickstart your prayer life. Kickstart your prayer life. Kickstart your prayer life. If you are there, you can pray in tongues. Begin to pray in tongues. Begin to pray in tongues. Kickstart your prayer life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. This is our month of renewal, O oh Lord. Every life that is going through decay, every prayer life that is going through decay, every Bible study life that is going through decay, Every life that is not evangelizing properly. Every life that is not serving you as they should serve you. Every life that is not given to you as should be given to you. This month of August, revive us again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let it be a month of renewal. For women in the church, it's a month of renewal. For men in the church, it's a month of renewal. Yeah. For the youth in this assembly, it's a month of renewal. Yeah. For the aged in this assembly, it's a month of renewal. Yeah. And every part of our body that is dying, physically dying, I speak life and renewal to those organs of the body now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Every 
every career that is dying, every career that is sinking, I speak life back to that area of your life in the name of Jesus. Every marriage that is decaying, relationships that are dying, I speak renewal into those lives and marriages now in the name of Jesus. Finances that are decaying and dying, academics life that are decaying and dying, this shall be your month of renewal in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Bless you forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed.